two, one. It's hey, it's Wild straight. Josh from Geek Cetera, and I'm joined by Ezra and Chase, and we're going to talk about Star Wars The High Republic and everything that we could find and put together in one compact little YouTube segment. Now, let's get geeky. I would not call a live show compact. Yeah, I know. It's probably not as compact as it could be, but that's okay. It's a bold claim. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm all in on this. Um, Ezra, you, you just picked up Light of the Jedi, or you just placed your order for Light of the Jedi? I did. So we're going to go through this, and we're going to start with what we know. The High Republic is the new era of storytelling for Star Wars a new era it's not really new i mean obviously they've told stories from the old republic all the way through now to um even in some of the legacy comics they went way into the the i'd venture to say no because technically is there anything canon from old republic right now this would be the first thing we have from pre-episode one that's official canon right aside from just like the occasional mention that's a good question because um i believe they're like some stuff like if you look at the actual graffiti that was in the Mandalorian, mm-hmm. there was uh, some stuff said. I think about old the Jedi. There's also in Solo, um, on what's the bad guy's desk? His name, whatever the bad guy, Drayden Voss. Is yeah. that his name? Okay, on his desk he had like a tablet, and like the 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 writing on there in Orbesh actually okay. said that that tablet came from the Temple of Exar Kun. Which is like really, really old Republic. But those are just so, mentions. We don't have any like yeah, stories from then. I guess you're probably kind of right. But, anyways, um, so we have three phases that we know of the old Republic that are coming. Light of the Jedi is the first phase, and that's the phase that we're in right now. And this is going to span all the way to like basically all the stories that come out for High Republic up into 2022 are going to fall into this phase one. And what we know about phase one is it's going to focus on the Jedi at their height, how they maintained peace in the galaxy, and how they dealt with the terrifying new villains, the the Nil and the Drengar. So these are new villains. From what we know, it doesn't sound like they're actually Force users. They may just be like pirates or something like that. Um, But, yeah. So that's kind of exciting to get just new story in the Star Wars universe. I thought that everything had come out because January 5th was like the big day. This is the day that they're going to be releasing everything. Um, But actually, there was some stuff that had come out beforehand, and I didn't realize this. So we're going to kind of go through phase one and what what it means, what what the stories are in phase one, and how you can stay in the know if you want to really follow it along. So on December 15th, 2020, um, a short story came out called Starlight Part 1, Go Together. Now, this short story can be found in, um, let me see, I have it written down here somewhere. It was found in the Star Wars Insider number 199. So Star Wars Insider is... Is a is a a magazine that is like you pay for a subscription. I don't think it comes out once a month. I think it only comes out like a couple come out a year. Mm-hmm. So because it's been out for a while and they're only at one ninety nine, so it definitely isn't coming out every month. They're wicked expensive. I was going to. I'm like, I want to get into Star Wars Insider. I want to get the subscription, and I looked, and it was I think like seventy dollars a, a year wow. for this magazine, and I was like, I can't. I can't, can't justify that. that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe if this if this gig of Geek Center was actually making money, then I could, but I can't justify that and like tell my wife, yeah. Because no, it just can't happen. So there was an actual little short story that was kind of the intro into this High Republic era. And I'm bummed that I missed it. I don't really know how exact lo- how exactly how long it was. Hopefully I can maybe even get it somewhere else. So that was on December 15th that came out. Then December 17th, just a couple days later, this was kind of interesting. They came out with a Chinese ebook called The Vow of the Silver Dawn. And as far as I know, you can only find it 
in Chinese. I don't know if it's been translated into Time English to or learn what. Mandarin, Josh. Yeah, I guess so. So that's its own thing as well. Now, like I said, on January 5th was the big open for this, for the High Republic. At that point, we got the novel, which I have right here, Light of the Jedi, which is written by Charles Sewell. We got um, a mid-grade novel, which I guess is for a younger audience, and it's called A Test of Courage. And that was written by Justine, Justina Ireland. And then we got this, this little book here, called The Great Jedi Rescue. I actually got this for my son. He's two and a half years old, and he loves Star Wars. So I figured he'd like this. Obviously, he can't read yet, but it's got a lot of big pictures. A lot of nice artwork in it and stuff. And this was done by Kevin Scott, and it was illustrated by Peter Antonson. So I got all those, and I was telling the story before we got on the live stream with the guys that as soon as the um, Amazon box came in, I opened it up. My son was right there. He saw this book. He grabbed it. He wanted me to read it to him. So I sat down, and I read him the entire book. Um, and then... After that, I pulled out the novel and started reading it. And I was kind of surprised to see. And so just so you know, if you do the same thing I did, this book here is going to tell pretty much the same story as the novel, except an extremely abridged version. So I was surprised. I was like, oh, no, I feel like I've already read this because I kind of had. But it's a way, you know, it's, it's like someone telling you the really, really, really quick version of the story. So it's Whereas, like someone telling you all the spoilers to the book. <laughs> kind of, but I'm sure there's, it's not all the spoilers. I, I'm guessing. I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping it's not all the spoilers. I think it's kind of cool though that they're keeping it like those three, like if you do kind of a high tier, a mid tier, and a low tier, so that way all yeah. Star Wars fans can appreciate it. Like, not just, you only get to appreciate this if you have, you know, a 10th grade reading comprehension or like, I, if if you want to read this Star Wars story, you have to read a four year old's book. Like, I like that it's telling the same story but at different levels. I think that's no. Cool. I did too. I was talking to a friend, and he's actually reading Ready Player Two to his sons, who are young, too young for Ready Player Two. <laughs> and he was like, "I have to skip through so much stuff to like make it up for the like okay for them." So this is like a way around that, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a version that's perfect for kids you don't have to worry about like you know taking any violence or anything like that out it's a kid's version mm -hmm. so i thought that was kind of a neat idea so on um so that was on january 5th Jen, on, on january 6th 2021 the high republic marvel comic series was supposed to come out but like covid does to uh, a lot of different things it actually got pushed back because i was all ready to go get it i was excited i'm like yes i'm all excited for this this um it's comic book day got pushed back to later in January. I'm not exactly hundred percent sure when in later January, but mm -hmm. that got pushed back on January 27th um, of 2021. We're expecting the high Republic show, which is going to be a YouTube web series. I do not have many details on that at all, except the fact that it's coming and it's supposed to come January 27th. So that'll be cool to check out for sure. Then we move into February, and in February 2nd, we're getting a young adult novel, which is Into the Dark. That one is going to be written by uh, Claudia Gray. In February 10th, 2021, um, we're getting part two of that short story, Star that Starlight short story. That's going to be in the number 200 of Star Wars Insider. So I said I don't think it's every month, and it seems like I was right. It's probably every other month that that magazine comes out because December was the other one, and then February, there's another one coming out. February 21st, 2021, The High Republic Adventures starts in an IDW comic book series. I thought this was interesting. They went with two different comic book companies for their, for their comics in The High Republic. One series that's going to be run by Marvel, one that's be, going to be done by IDW Comics. I'm not super familiar with comics, but I'd never heard of IDW. So I don't know if that's a newer comic book um, company or if they've been around for a while and I just don't really know many of their, their series. But that's going to be coming out on February 21st. 
in March 17th, 2021, we're getting a, um, a short story called First Duty, which sounds like it's probably going to be in um, 2021. Blech, I can't speak. In um, Yeah, First Duty is going to be in Star Wars Insider 201. Sorry, my notes are a little bit all over. Then in June of 20, the 29th of 2021, we're getting another mid-grade novel called The Race to Crash Point Tower. And this one is going to be done by Daniel Jose Older. Now, a lot of these names may sound familiar to you if you read Star Wars novels, because they've written other Star Wars novels as well. But now they're all working on this um, High Republic era. In July 6, 2021, we're getting an adult novel called The Rising Storm, which is going to be done by Kevin Scott. He's the same one that wrote this, this uh, younger book for, for, book for a younger audience. He also can write novels as well. He's done quite a few of them. So he's going to be doing uh, that, that Rising Storm novel coming out in uh, July 20. No, sorry, July 6th. Then July 27th, sorry, we're getting to the end here, 2021, Out of the Shadows is a young adult novel that is going to be done by Justina Ireland. And then we're going to go to beyond 2021 or beyond July 2021. There's going to be a, a manga, The Edge of Balance, that's coming out. I have information on that. Story is going to be by, and I don't know all these these people, um, Shima Shinya, which I'm thinking, I, I don't know. I don't know her. her the net name doesn't ring any bells. And Justina Ireland. She's going to be working on this one as well. And the art's going to be by Mizuki Sakayabra. I'm sorry. I'm very bad at pronouncing names. But I don't Mizuki blame you on that one. Sakayabra is going to be doing now. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. Name, pronouncing. But then we're also getting a graphic novel called The Monster of Temple Peak. This is going to be coming sometime after July 2021 as well. And that one is going to be done by, I believe it's Kevin Scott. Yeah, Kevin Scott and Rachel Stott are going to be working on that gra graphic novel, The Monster of Temple Peak. And then the last thing that we know that is coming for this phase one of the, the High Republic is The Acolyte the Disney Plus series, which we talked about in our last live stream last week. That's going to be coming um, sometime late 2021, early 2022, it looks like. It's going to be written by Leslie Headland, And we know that it's going to be focusing on a character that has dark side force powers. Obviously, an acolyte would have that. Um, it was announced during Investor Day. So this could be, as we know, the story. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me, that came out of nowhere. Um, we know that the main part of this story for the High Republic in Phase 1 had been dealing with a, an enemy that is not Force-sensitive, does not use the Force, not, a, not like Sith or something like that. But it seems like maybe it's going to lead that way. As we know, Acolyte is going to be coming out towards the, the end of that phase. So just to briefly recap, you said all this is just phase one? <laughs> yes. So there's still two more phases of this to happen? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah. that's in there, and that, that goes all the way up to 2022. No, it makes sense, because I, I thought it was weird when they were when we did Disney Investor Day, um, the Marvel stream, and then the, the Star Wars side. I thought it was really weird that we're like not getting anything Star Wars in 2021, but it seems like it's just because they wanted it to kind of focus more on the books and comic side, which makes sense. Um, then so that way they're giving yeah. people time to read things rather than sit there and watch a show. So I wonder right. if like after we're gonna get you know a large string of like Star Wars stuff and they're gonna give us a ton of new Marvel comics and books and stuff like that, or if it's just gonna keep going the way it is. I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious myself. I feel like the payoff, why I wanted to go all in on this High Republic is that as they were really, Disney was really excited to announce it. They put a lot of their best writers on it. And I feel like the payoff's going to be big because it's going to be more than just storytelling in books and comics. Yeah. 
there is going to be live action payoff in it. Mm -hmm. And we know we're getting Acolyte, and I think there's going to be more to come from that. I just think that Acolyte is the only one that has been announced so far. But going into Phase 2 and Phase 3, which phase um, we said Phase 1 is Light of the Jedi, Phase 2, Quests of the Jedi, and Phase 3, Trials of the Jedi, I feel like there'll be live action with that as well. Or maybe even... um, Mm -hmm cartoon series or cg series something similar to like clone wars or rebels that could come from there so let's get into some of these stories a little bit more and what we what we know um so phase one like i said focusing on the height of the jedi phase two obviously we don't have much information going on beyond phase uh one but speculation is that it's going to expand into the, the galaxy, because phase one is taking place on the edge of the known galaxy, where the outer rim is where Light of the, Light of the Jedi kind of starts out, the, the novel. Um, we're getting into territories that aren't really the core of the Star Wars galaxy. We're telling stories in these planets that maybe we haven't heard of before, or there's very little story based around them, and how there's some, some sort of villain that's out there creeping. It's interesting. I don't know where it's going to go, but I remember in Legends, and now this is Legends, there was a villain, a species called the Yuzan Vong. Do you guys remember the Yuzan Vong? The Yuzan Vong. Or the Yuzan Vong. Yeah. Yeah. So could they get into some kind of big, bad, you know, species that's on the edge of outer space that... You know, now it's it's an interesting time period because mm. this would all have had happened before what we know. So mm. I don't know how it all work in and play out. I personally feel like this is all going to run into uh, because because where the timeline is, if we look, the stories that they're telling in the High Republic consist of from 300 BBY, which is before the Battle of Yavin or before the first Death Star blew up. Mm-hmm to 82 BBY. So that's 218 years Yeah, that they're calling the High Republic era, where they have 218 years where they can they can tell story in this, this era. That puts it pretty close to when you would think um, Plagueis would be starting to do his stuff with, with Palpatine. Now, obviously, Palpatine is not... What's the ending year when, again? When we, I'm sorry. 82. 82 BBY. So I don't know exactly how old Palpatine is when we meet him in in um, Phantom. Phantom Menace. I'm going to say he's in his 50s. Sounds like Ezra has his Googling hands on. <laughs> I'm going to guess that's where, Fan- where Phantom Menace. Is. Yeah. Yeah, in Phantom Menace. And if that's the case... He's between 50, uh, 45 and 50. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, um, and we think he probably got trained from a young age, then Plagueis is probably around when, when we're talking 82 BBY. Maybe like right at the tail end, yeah. I'm trying to think. Didn't he say that Plagueis was, could stop himself from dying? No, he could not. That's the one thing he couldn't do. He could bring people back. Is that what yep. it was? He could. Yeah, he, he could, could stop, stop others, others from, from dying, dying, but not himself. He could stop Ironic. others from dying, but not himself. Okay, that was the the ballad of yeah Plagueis or whatever. The yeah. tragedy of Darth Plagueis. The tra- lies. exactly. So, let's eight eighty. Sorry, what did you say? It was eighty two again? Eighty two. Yeah, eighty two BBY. So I feel like the time matches so, up. Palpatine. Could have just been born, which means that Plagueis would probably be his own, would be an apprentice or something. Yeah, Un- unless they slightly change his age. Right. Yeah. But by, by the, I mean, uh, if I'm doing my math right, which I'm pretty sure I am, um, he would he would just have been born like right on the on the last year. Yeah, and, and we know that Pla- if he was fifty, if he was fifty, or if he was forty-five to fifty during Phantom Menace. And he survived all the way to Rise of Skywalker. He had the ability to extend his life longer than it should have. So he could have been much older than in Phantom Menace than we even know. It's possible. 
but I don't think if he was using the dark side to send his life somehow. He he dies on the Death Star. I don't think he could have clone. I don't think he could have because he's a very public figure. If he had lived for hundreds of years, yeah, they would know. Was there there a a book, a novel, or is that is not canon anymore? Right? It was Legends about Plagueis and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, Had to have been Legends, I would think. I'm thinking it's Legends, but I feel like there was a a book. Yeah, there was a book, and it is Legends. Called the, Darth Plagueis. The novel, was written by James Lucino. Yeah. The novel Darth Plagueis. When was this article published? It says it's considered canon. Oh, really? The book. The book title says Legends on the top. I yep, cover. you're right. You're right. You're right. So it was at one point, I guess, considered canon, but it ain't yeah. anymore. So I, is... I just think it's good. That it could somehow tie in, and I'm curious as to how. Yeah, it's possible. I just like, like the idea that they're giving a story where this is so detached from the rest of the Skywalker saga, they can really do whatever they want. We don't have to worry about plot holes or anything, because characters that they make, they're going to be dead. So they don't have to yeah. worry about killing characters off and leaving them alive and you know interrupting with things, because that doesn't matter. So... Yeah, I mean, and the only known character that we know of Yoda. so far is Yoda. And, yeah, so, and, and so I haven't even, he hasn't even come up in the book I'm reading yet, and I'm on chapter four or five. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't think he's going to have a huge part in the whole thing. Maybe, maybe some part, but I don't think it'll yeah. be a huge part. Because they're telling a new story, and they want to tell, they yep. want to introduce new characters, which I like. So, um, so what do we, what, what do we got in the adult novels that we know are coming out, which are Light of the Jedi, which is already out, and Rising Storm, which is coming out in July. Um, with Light of the Jedi, what we it's by Charles Sewell, as I said, and it features a great disaster. That um, that it's an incident, it's an inciting incident event, is what they're calling it. So it's some kind of cataclysm that happens that starts something new. So. Um, and it has to do with the ship being destroyed. I don't want to um, say too much. And how that ship being destroyed in this unique way um, affects a entire system of planets and, and puts them in peril. The other book, Rising Storm, which is going to be done by Kevin Scott, features at the Republic Fair, a gathering to celebrate the great things, new inventions of the Republic, and involves... The Jedi Stellan Goyce, Goyos, I don't know if I'm saying that right, as well as the monster hunter named Yai Yorick. So that seems like it's telling a completely different story from what Light of the Jedi is telling. But those are the two adult novels that are coming out. In the young adult novels, which is the Into the Dark, coming out in February by Claudia Gray, it features a Padawan, Wreath Slyus, whose ship is knocked out of hyperspace, forcing him to take shelter in a mysterious abandoned space station. And the, uh, the, the second one by Justina Ireland, which is coming out on July 27th, is um, a, a continues the story of Vernestra Rowe from A Test of Courage. So some of these books are kind of interconnected until different stories that go along with each other. Um, the mid-grade novels, A Test of Courage, which is by Justina Ireland. The novel shows 15-year-old Jedi Knight Vernesta Rowe as she escorts a group of children to the Starlight Beacon until a bomb disables their ship and they must survive on a jungle moon. So um, kind of interesting story there. And then... Um, Race to Crash Point Tower, which comes out June 29th. Daniel Jose Older wrote this, says, taking place at the same time as Rising Storm, the adult novel. Um, it, it features Padawan Ram, Jamaram, a gifted mechanic from a small planet, getting the first glimpse of the, gal- the, the largest galaxy through the Republic Fair and Lula Tesola of the High Republic Adventure. So that's connected with the comic book series. So it's interesting how interconnected it is. So what's got to the interconnectivity and how 
what is connected with what. So Starlight Part 1, Go Together, the short story that was in Star Wars Insider 199, starts it all. Then comes The Light of the Jedi, this novel. This novel runs is the same story as in The Great Jedi Rescue. And start part then that from there that story continues on in Starlight Part Two, a short story that we get in Star Wars Insider Two Hundred, and then from there it goes into the Marvel comic book series that is going to be coming out later this month. So that's the start of the story. Then other stories that are connected that run congruently with the story that we're, we're already getting. Test of Courage, which is the middle age novel and Out of the Shadows. Those, it's Test of Courage, then Out of the Shadows. That is a continuation of the story. Then in the IW comic, the IDW comic book series, The High Republic Adventures, that starts off a story arc that continues to a race to Crash Point Tower. From there, it goes to the Rising Storm adult novel, and then to the Monster of Temple Peak graphic novel. So I'm sure someone has all this broken down in a nice little graph somewhere. Our graph is not as easy to read. Like I, I wouldn't just share it with you because it might be a little confusing, but um, that's the way the story kind of goes and follows. I just want to so throw a what, huge what shout out think? to Kyle for putting yeah. all of this together. This yeah. is so much research, so many books, so many comics and everything. We would be lost without you, Kyle. Yeah, and Disney didn't really put out as anywhere that we could find all this information nice and wrapped tightly with a bow for us. We had the kind of – Kyle went around and tried to track down all this information and put it all together so that we could make sense of it. Um, and um, I wasn't trying to – say that he did a bad job or anything it's just no, no, it's so many pieces that we're trying yeah. to pull and put together to make this puzzle um yeah, it's it would hard. be nice it was all just somewhere disney just gave it to us and said mm -hmm. this is the order of things but they haven't really done that so uh, we talked about this story um this this era we're kind we're excited about it especially the the possibility of it coming to fruition in live action but um yeah so, so far, I will tell you, I've, I've started um, Light of the Jedi. I did not get my book on the 5th. I ordered it on Amazon. I pre-ordered it, actually, but didn't arrive for a few days after. I think I got it on Friday. So, it came out on the 5th. Friday was the 8th. So, I got it a few days later. I've read four or five chapters so far. And so far, so good. I mean, it started off a little slow. It's picked up now the pace a little bit. I'm starting to like it. But I really like the, the Jedi. They're just different. Something about them is different. And I think it's the fact that the era that the st story starts in is the galaxy is completely at peace. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's totally different than anything we've ever seen. Because even in Phantom Menace... There weren't. It wasn't peace. It was the start of the war mm -hmm. with the, the the trade federation. So we never really see a Star Wars story where it's just peaceful, and that's the way that the book starts. So even when things start to go sideways in the book, it's almost like they don't want to believe it. Like, what do you mean we've been at peace for years? Like, how can anything happen? Like, so it's just a different Star Wars. I mean, wars is in the name Star Wars. Yeah. There is no war. It's just peace. The mm -hmm. Jedi are just peacekeepers and like everything's great and everyone's happy. And so it's kind of interesting. And Different you're physically time. reading this book? Yeah, yeah. Is there an audiobook version? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm like, that's the only way. I don't I don't sit down and read <laughs> things anymore. I'm a terrible person, I know. But I, the only way I would ever end up hearing this story is either Josh telling me about it or by me listening to an audiobook. Chase, I'll read you the... <laughs> there we go. Yes. <laughs> this Josh, is the version I'll call, you you, I'll call you at bedtime, Josh. I'll have my parents come tuck me in and let you read a bedtime story over Zoom. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah. I actually 
decided with Ready Player Two, which came out um, in November, that I was actually going to get the physical copy because right now I have a two and a half year old in my house, and there's just so much going on constantly that I just needed like to be able to escape to a quiet spot and just be quiet for a minute mm-hmm. or two. So uh, I've been reading a little bit before bed every night. And it's really helped my psyche, I feel like, to just sit down in a quiet place and just read and like, yeah, it's nice. And I also feel like when I listen to an audiobook, I'm only partially listening because you're always doing something else at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when I actually do read, I, I retain more. And I, I feel like once I'm done reading a chapter, I'm not like, wait, what just happened? I'm like, Oh yeah, I can I can actually take a test on this and and pass. Yeah, I I think it's it's funny for me. It's the opposite. I actually do process the information easier through an audiobook. But I really want to get into the habit of reading like casually for pleasure because I feel like it. I feel like I want to get better at it, <laughs> um, be able to retain the information better and yeah. understand it. Pre- I just have a comprehension issue i guess yeah so that's my uh that's my story i have a lot i have a lot easier processing knowledge in in audio form yeah i have an ADD ADD issue where i'll like read an entire page and then get to the bottom and be like what the heck just happened and have to reread the entire page i think Uh, that's that's where i I am yeah i think that's where i am i get too distracted yeah what i've i found that i like about light of the jedi is that the chapters are not long chapters so if I if I say I'm gonna sit down and read a chapter or two, if it is like it takes me an hour to read a whole chapter, that's it. I'm like at my max, and by the end of that time period, I'm like really like okay, okay, like I'm I'm starting to read faster than I want to. You're like counting how many pages you have left. Yeah, well I will like if I'm like okay, I have 15 minutes. How long is this chapter? When I see it's only like two or three pages, I'm or you know I'm like oh that's doable. When I see it's 20 pages, then I'm like, oh, I can't do that in 15 minutes. Yeah, unless that's I awesome. really want to speed read. I so, think that's where it's really funny. I think that's where um, Shadow of the Hegemon really got me. Mm-hmm. Was like the length of chapters, I think, is why I stopped reading it, honestly. I got like halfway through and I was like, yeah, yeah I just can't do it. Like, <laughs> it's too, like, there's no good stopping point. And the that chapters was, are like half the book. That was um, the the. Um, I think that was the the one with. If I'm thinking of the right one. That was the series. Why can't I think of the name? I read the first one. Oh, Ender's, uh, name. Ender's game. game, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh no, that was the Bean book. What the heck one was I reading? The one after Speaker for the Dead. So Ready Player One, I like. I mean, Ready Player Two, I really liked that book, but the chapters were really big sometimes, and that was it was refreshing to go from that book to this book, where they're not so big, so I can take smaller chunks. I think it, out, it was yeah. Children of the Mind. Sorry, just to no, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so I think is there more? I mean, there's a lot more we can say about. High Republic, but I don't want to make it too confusing for people. I have a mini theory. Sure. And it's not even about the High Republic. It, it has something to do with the High Republic. Okay, because as as you, know, game. No. you mentioned, you mentioned, and I, this is kind of what I'm in my head trying to figure out what defines an era, mm-hmm. right? What, what defines the High Republic? Why is it, would you say, 218 years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Why, why? Why 218? Why not 200? Why not round number, right? And yeah. I think I think I understand at least why the end year is the way that it is. And I think I understand... So, if you were to say who the main character of Marvel's Phase 1 and Phase 2 was, who would you say? Tony. Uh, Tony Stark. Because I would say Thanos. At least, or at least Phase 2. Because it kind of, all of the movies lead up to and mention Thanos. Uh, at least all the Avengers movies, right? So it, to me, it's really a Thanos series. Hence why uh, it's the Infinity Saga, right? Mm-hmm. And hence, hence why his gauntlet's on the front of the Infinity Saga disc set. 
Mm-hmm. So to me, I think the Skywalker saga, the main character is actually Emperor Palpatine. I could see that. The right? Because he was. The reason that I'm was, okay with that is because then it actually makes sense why Episode Nine is still part of the Skywalker saga, even though there's no Skywalkers in it. You got it, bud. And why the the end date on the High Republic and the start date of the Skywalker saga is the way it is, was that was the year Emperor Palpatine was born. Boom, I figured it out. Mm. So so you think he was born in 82 BBY? I, I absolutely 100% believe that. So you think then that they would consider, you know, so I'm thinking if you're in the Star Wars universe, would you consider that the, the Palpatine era? Like, would you would you call it that? Because maybe they're like... I would of, say it's we, the rise... We call it the Skywalker saga, but... I would think that they would have changed like the era that they call it at the change like the change of government type like the empire is its own era so you have the rise and fall of the empire but now you're I in would, this new republic and the new republic lasts for like two years until you get the first order I, I would know. say the rise yeah I'd say well it is funny how they do why they do the things they do right like how in BBY you know, mm. so I don't really know, but I kind of feel like it's like the rise and, and fall of both galactic empires. If you think about it, I mean, they're both like he, he, you know, Palpatine says he's turning the Republic into the first galactic empire. Yeah. And then there's the second galactic empire. I think, yeah. I think in that page of Star Wars history, that's what defines it is those empires. Yeah. yeah. And, and Palpatine was instrumental in the rise and fall of both of them i would say yeah how how old do you think palpatine was when he killed plagueis 20 could he been younger like i would have said older i'm wondering if 82 instead of being when play when palpatine was born was when he killed Plagueis. Well, he would have to be sixty. So I guess in, epi- is, in, in episode one, he would have to be sixty. I guess technically, isn't isn't the theory that Plagueis created Anakin? So then, it probably would have been, re- like, if Plagueis is, you know, fifty or if, uh, sorry, Palpatine rather is fifty at that time period, and Anakin is what eight? Yeah. So then he was fine. Palpatine fine me, was probably he- in his early 40s which is fine by me if if he did kill him when he was 10 because that's more evidence to prove that uh anakin was created by palpatine and not plagueis yeah which to me makes more sense and also it's how they drew it in the graphic novel so i don't know i don't know what you want <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not gonna go there i mean we, that's for a different time into it <laughs> You guys, you guys went back and forth in the Discord for like hours on that. Well, this is the thing, right? And it like it completely makes more sense, even from it. Like, why is Palpatine tied to the Skywalkers? Because he created Anakin. Mm. I felt like the comic book was showing that. Now I know that. And he what did come out and say we we didn't say that, but. So the artwork appeared to be showing. That. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And Logan's that, that's in so... the chat, so I'm just waiting on him to actually like respond to Ezra. <laughs> why does it make Why does it make any sense that Ray and Kylo are a Force dyad? Because they were both created by the same person, right? Ray and wait, say that again. Ray and Kylo. Why were they a Force dyad? Why Why is that a thing that happened? What? I think it's because they were both created by Palpatine. They were basically relatives, yeah. essentially. If you think about it, because because if Palpatine mm-hmm. created Skywalker or, and yeah. Anakin, and mm-hmm. Anakin and uh, Kylo, Anakin's Kylo's grandfather, and Rey was a descendant of Palpatine, they're both Palpatines. Yeah. Hence why their connection to the Force is so close. That That makes t- total sense to me. You why, know that I will not argue way? you on this point because I 100% agree. I know there will be other people who argue it. <laughs> well, 
That's what I'm Shelley sorry, Logan, but there like, he is. He finally said the other straight up said that's not what he meant to portray. That's fine, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I if think I, we need now, this, uh, my <laughs> goal, my goal with this theory, and what should have been the writer's goal of that book, <laughs> was to make the stupid trilogy that we got make an ounce of sense. <laughs> oh. Right, um, Ch Chase. Kyle says that he agrees with you. The, yeah, he was twenty. When he yeah, no. Once, as soon as I thought about it for like half a second, I was like, "Oh yeah, that makes way more sense." That who is what? Kyle re said I redeemed myself when I had originally said that Palpatine was like twenty, and then changed it to like, "Oh wait, yeah, he created Anakin." So, or the theory, yeah. the rumor is that he created it. So yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, so, yeah, I like your Republic... theory though that that's what de determines the uh, the era. You know what? If if we're gonna just be like J.K. Rowling about this whole thing and like <laughs> retcon crap after the fact, that's an easy retcon, super easy. <laughs> Someone get on that because that's ridiculous. They missed an opportunity there. So my my, you think that what brings? So uh, you, you were talking about this time this time period of 218 years and what makes the high republic era end at a, an odd number like or it's not actually it's an even number but mm -hmm. at, at 218 and not just 200 or whatever yeah some some event must have stopped it there yeah y yeah i don't know if that event of just palpatine being born is enough to stop it well, well it I doesn't it's if so, so the, the way i'm thinking about it josh is if you look at history right and mm -hmm. you look at like the king, the queen, Qing, whatever, any of the Chinese dynasties. Do you yeah. really think that every day they were like, oh, you know, it's not a good day in the, the Xing dynasty? Like, no, they didn't call it that until afterwards, and historians are like, all right, this is when this dynasty started and ended and became this dynasty. And so, also, yeah, right. and if you're talking about I the suppose, fact that yeah. we, are, we are watching Star Wars, a thing that happened a long time ago in a galaxy far away, we're watching this as like a historical documentary where they've already broken <laughs> it up and determined... Like this is a set time period. Thanks, the wills. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I can see it that no. way. Well, if, we're, if I look at it that way, but then I think the, about like the other what... thing too that I was thinking, Josh, is it doesn't yeah. necessarily like you don't have to think about this as a historical, like documentary, like Chase put it. But this is, but it is obviously this is this is how the sagas yeah. are being told are being told through mm -hmm. a story and narr like the narrative. Um, so I. I th I think um, more like these these sagas aren't determined as like hi historical periods, like the Victorian era, but more as just like this is when the start and the end of the saga is from a story standpoint, not necessarily like an age in history, right? Right. So I'm that's just thinking like maybe like um, instead of it ending like like a, like a historical documentary, kind of like looking back, that what what stopped like after. When, when the second Death Star exploded, right, at the time when we were watching the movie, before we knew there was a sequel trilogy that was going to be coming, the Empire era had ended, as far as we knew. We didn't know that there was going to be a uh, First Order and all that stuff. But I guess that, that mm -hmm. I'm thinking the High Republic, we're being told this is an era of peace where the Jedi rule rule. And then at some point at 82 BBY, that all changes. And is so what and like why I'm just wondering if that is when a new like whatever something changed there. I wonder if it's more than just Palpatine's born, but something like something happened. And I think it could be involved Plagueis for sure, where that era of peace was no longer the era well if you think about it episode Republic. episode one that was a relative era of peace right it was i i thought so i thought so but you're thinking now that now that you've read the book you're thinking like it's different it's yeah. not it's yeah well everything that happened in episode one was orchestrated by emperor palpatine right so my or chief, not emperor. But um, my thinking is that not, nothing necessarily changed the instant he was born, but right. his birth directly 
effect affected the future of the galaxy and whether and whether the peace was going to last yeah that's true so I, that's just how i see it mm -hmm. um my my other question is what started this period yeah and it's like maybe revan died but no revan like was a that long was long time long. i know i wonder what started this period too i was thinking because it comes in being peace already so like how long was that peace yeah. They make it feel like it was a long time because they're like, like when the when stuff starts happening at the yeah. very beginning of the book, they're surprised by it and like, wait, we're at peace, like nothing bad happens. Well, like, what what so, ye what year? What year does the book take place? The the first year. I don't know if it tells me because does something in the book happen that? Because I don't know because I haven't read it, but does something in the book happen that kind of? sets the tone for how the rest of the series is going to play out. It doesn't say. It's it's really interesting because it's just part one. The the great disaster. Yeah. That to me sounds so like something is... that, you know, could start an era. Yeah. Potentially, right? That's what I was kind of yeah. thinking. Yeah. But there is this interesting uh, timeline at the very beginning of the book. Star Wars novels timeline. Mm-hmm. It says Light of the Jedi, which is the, this book. And then yeah. way down there is Dooku, yeah. Jedi Lost, and Master and Apprentice. What book was Master and Apprentice? Um, Is Dooku Jedi Lost technically in the High Republic then? Or no, it couldn't have been. It says well, it, I puts have it, been. it puts it in that era. He's, he's not older than Sheev, if my theory is correct. It, it puts it technically, if you look on this, yeah. before I... Phantom Menace. And maybe the he is of the High Republic. Could be, I guess. So I think it is at the very end of the High Republic. He would Republic. have had to been at least like. I don't, but he wouldn't have been. He old. wouldn't have been a Jedi lost during that time period, though, because if you think about it, he trained Qui Gon, and Qui Gon isn't older than Sheev. Yeah, there's no way. So even if Dooku is older, it doesn't. That time frame doesn't fit. Doesn't make sense. Dooku Jedi Lost was written by Kevin Scott, which is. And. Asajj Ventress is in it, isn't she? Yeah. I mean, she's on the pet front of the book. Yeah. yeah and she's um, certainly not what's Master and Apprentice? Is that. Well, wait, that doesn't. Show me that thing again. What thing? That's. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Why, though? Like. Maybe it's just there to. It puts well, it in the there's High no, Republic. there's no cap on the High Republic. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if you think about it, uh, Episode One wasn't the end of the High Republic, so there's no, like, yeah. yeah. Okay, Lay of the Jedi. <laughs> um, we were totally prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Master and Jedi, no, sorry, Master and Apprentice is the novel that's about Qui Gon and Obi Wan written by Claudia Gray. Hmm. Interesting. So, it doesn't I'm not getting a like a, date. a definitive answer as to when the timeline yeah. is. I should uh reach out to Oh, uh <clears throat> it, it says 232 sorry, 232 BBY. 232 BBY. So it's actually into that era quite significantly. It's hmm. not like it's right starting at 300. That's kind of what I, what I was wondering if it just started at 200. So does well, that mean there's going to be a... Does, does the era start I, at 300 BBY? Yeah, 300 BBY. So that's a little weird to me. Like, that's really to, to, number then. I don't, it, it would be weird for me to like have that the first book kind of come out, but then have a prequel to that book like why not when you're making this whole new series right of books beginning. just start at the beginning of this era that you've predetermined the time period of i think they've they've nicely cushioned themselves enough space that they can write prequels if they want to maybe yeah that's probably what they did yeah you're probably right <laughs> you know so they start off like i said <laughs> they're starting off at what do you say 232 and there's peace so there's been peace for a long time and um yeah that's that's what i think they did 
why can't this it be a series of books that covers years within the era? Ezra is overthinking this. <laughs> That's what Kyle says. We're all overthinking this. This is yes. what we do. Wait, what, what is? Wait, what does he mean? I don't. I'm not, why can't it be a series of books that covers years within the era? Well, because someone set someone set this specific 812 years, which seems like an arbitrary number to me. 218 years. That one. Slight what did I say? <laughs> you just went completely backwards. 812. It's, yep. He got the right numbers. It's all he that matters. He did get the right numbers. It's not the right order. I guarantee it. Um, what was I saying? Someone set that number. That seems very arbitrary to me. So that my, th You're right. It could just be they picked that number. They like just, you know, I'm roll, rolled, a rolled a 300 to... sided die and they just picked a number. I'm but here's the thing is they could have just said, you know, the High Republic, which ended in 82 BBY. They didn't have to set a start year for the High Republic. Unless they intentionally meant to. Light of the Jedi. Actually, maybe it's in the well, wiki. That's why I'm thinking the first in number is arbitrary. Yeah. That's a round number. Yeah. 300 BBY. Somebody just waited to time their coup perfectly. They're like, nah, we have to make this dynasty nice. <laughs> Logan said they rolled a bunch of dice and added them up. Yep, I agree. There you go. Yeah, timeline says 230. Two, BBY. I mean, maybe it does say that somewhere in. I don't remember it saying it though. No, I was reading it. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Is there anything else to say about uh, High Republic for right now? Not hey, nothing. Co nothing not controversial yeah. to to <laughs> Logan and and uh, we have Kyle. to have we have to have a live stream where it's just Logan and. Uh, and Ezra, and me and Chase will just moderate. If and you want, you guys, you play guys devil's just... advocate. I like playing devil's <laughs> advocate. <laughs> oh man! That if you want to bring, episode. if you want to bring someone on that has zero valid points, that'd be great. Oh, oh Logan, you're getting called out. <laughs> that was a sick burn. <laughs> uh, he's gonna hear that in a few minutes. And I know. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stupid! Like five seconds oh, screen delay. Monty's <laughs> yelling at you. <laughs> Ezra. Oh boy! Oh, that's your adopted son right there. You can't say those things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. What did you guys think about the High Republic? Are you excited? Looking forward to it? You're gonna dive on in. Let us know. And if you have any thoughts or theories on how, where the High Republic could go, where it started. Um, how it could end. Let us know in the comment section below and make sure you subscribe, hit the thumb icon or, or the uh, bell icon so that you're always notified when we put up new videos and we go live for live streams. And lastly, if you want to, uh, next week we're going to start getting into our live streams on WandaVision. So if you're interested in WandaVision, you plan on watching that series, make sure to subscribe for sure because you're going to want to see our live streams on as we go episode by episode of, through one division thanks for watching and until next time few can stand against the knights of the jedi order but there are always those who will try for thousands of years jedi knights were guardians of peace and justice in the old republic before the, the dark time